Stand with me. My knees at the altar. Listen. Seeking God's favor yeah. till the glory came down. Till the glory came down. A moment of silence. It's just not the same. The altar's been empty for way too long now. Tears need to fall on the church floor again. Holy Ghost conviction and preaching on sin. The burden when was the last time a tear of yours fell on the floor of this church? See, people don't like me asking questions like that. It probably condemns them. Well, I grew up here in, in Portage, in the old church and in the new. There was a lot of tears being shed. The altar would be wet sometimes. I remember, I remember back when the church was turned around, a lot of my tears was hitting on the floor. I don't see that today a lot. They're just in here. Hurry up. Let's get out of here. <laughs> sing, don't sing too many songs. We've lost some. In fact, that that little phrase there in the rest of this song church we've lost something and I'm telling you as straight as I can this morning we better find it again we better find that God that spirit let that spirit work on us There's, you remember me time after time I've said my God can't you just feel the Lord Man, I can feel the Lord. And I'm telling you, this is the truth. Look at it any way you want. Con say I'm condemning. Whatever you want to do. But when I can feel that, I see one or two others feel. And here's some people. Supposed to be in the church. Supposed to have the Holy Ghost. What are you doing? We're in God's house. Where is your mind? What little bit of time we've got here. Let's use it for the glory of God. The song was saying they prayed back then, sure, till, glo till the glory came down. <laughs> well, there's no, not a lot of glory coming down in the services today. They're talking. They're running in and out the back door. Some's half asleep. Some sitting there angry. No wonder things are not getting done today. It's no wonder healing is not taking place. Nobody's mind's where it ought to be. Well, I'm here. God doesn't want you here. He wants you in the service. A lot of people can be at church, but they're not in church. <clears throat> I think a lot of people, they're at the altar, but they're not in the altar. Go ahead, brother. For sinners, we've lost it somehow. Lost it. The altar's been empty for way too long now. We used to sing those old hymns with yeah. conviction. Sweet touch of God, it would fill the church house. Feel it. When prayer warriors knelt, God heard when they prayed. We left the old path and we're paying now. Boy, oh, that's true. Tears need to fall. Church 
I can't, you may be seated. I can't imagine anybody listening, and I mean this, anybody. Not just me, not just some old saint. Everybody in this church this morning, every one of you, I don't understand how people can listen to that and not get emotional. I don't understand it. Well, brother, I didn't get emotional. Well, then I'm talking to you. you can get mad at me if you want to. If songs like that, the meaning, I'm not talking about the group. I'm not talking about just the music. I'm talking about that message. If that doesn't stir you and wake you up and think, my God, something's wrong. I want to go into the scriptures right now. I hope they've got that going now. <laughs> Genesis chapter 8. Genesis chapter 8. In the old altar. There's several ways of looking that up on a computer, depending on how you phrase it. Or you can just put altar. If I'm not mistaken, I think the word altar itself is mentioned 321 times in the Bible. I'd say that's rated pretty high, wouldn't you? The altar. The altar. From Genesis all the way through. We find here in Genesis chapter 8 that Noah, almost 6,000 years ago, we find him building an altar. Verse 20 and 22, Genesis 8. Noah built an altar unto the Lord. I wish, church, that we could get people today and preachers, amen, if they feel led of God, a lot of them are doing things, they say that they're being led of God and I don't believe they're being led of God because the things that they're doing under that assumption doesn't go along with the Scriptures. So that can't be led of God. They're lying. He built an altar. Notice, and I ain't going to go through all of them because we don't have time. Amen. Altar after altar, in the, in the, especially back here in the Old Testament I'm talking about now, when they built an altar, they did, didn't just build an altar. They built it unto the Lord. They built it unto His name. His name was always connected with these altars. Look at the, look how many churches erected out there today, and they never even give it a thought about His name. Amen. They built this altar unto the Lord. Because when they went to that altar, they wanted God's eyes and God's mind upon that altar. They wanted to, amen, 
get a hold of God at that altar. They wanted to leave something if they could, so to speak, what we would learn later on at that altar. I taught, taught a little bit on this a few years ago. I don't know if I had my note on that. Back in, I think it was 13. That every time you go to the altar, I mean, you should leave something up there. In other words, you're, it ought to cost you something. I said, serving God should cost you something. And I'm going to prove it by the scripture here in a little bit. Lord willing. Built an altar unto the Lord and took of every clean beast. Notice what was being offered on this altar that was erected unto God. What was offered on it was a clean beast. Did you catch that? Look what's going to the altar today. And they're expecting God to receive it when it's not clean. It's not truly repented for us today. It's not sincere. Just go to the altar. God will hear me. I don't think I have to do this. I don't think I have to do that. That's not a clean sacrifice. And took of every clean beast. See, back then they offered beast, lambs, bullock, whatever. But even they had to be, if they went to the God under the law, they had to have the best. They couldn't take something that ever had a, a, a mark on it, crippled, didn't look right, something's going on. They couldn't offer that up to God. It had to be the firstling of the flock. Look, church. Just look what they're offering of God in 20, what, now 24? <laughs> look what they're offering God. Take me as I am. He didn't start out that way. You didn't just take whatever they offered on that offer. I preached on that. Everything people's offering today is not accepted by God. And every clean fowl and offered burnt offerings on the altar. What altar? The one erected unto God. Every altar, God only knows, is the old saying, but it's true. God only knows how many altars are on this planet right now. Been erected by somebody for some reason to some God. But they were not erected unto the Lord. Amen. That's our first problem in the world today. And when it was offered upon, their, upon that altar, and the Lord smelled a sweet savor. In other words, it seemed good to the Lord. Smelled good. This is, this is all right. Look, church, what people are trying to offer God today. They're up there with alcohol in their bloodstream. Drugs are in their system. Smoke is in their lungs. Cursings in their vocabulary. We all need to examine ourselves. How many is with me? Nobody in here is perfect. But we're striving to be perfect. And in God's eyes, some of us are, are doing fine. That doesn't mean we can stop. We still got, we still got to keep it. He said, examine yourselves to see if you be in the faith. No, everybody wants to examine me. They want to examine you. My Bible tells me to examine myself to see if I be in the faith. <clears throat> and the Lord smelled a sweet, a sweet savor. And the Lord said in his heart, I will not again curse the ground anymore for man's sake. For the imagination of man's heart is evil from his youth 
from his youth. People today don't like me and other ministers to preach on the youth too much. Well, it's been around a long time. And that's why the youth is in the shape it's in in this world today. That's why our colleges are in the shape that they're in today. That's why our school system's in the shape that it's in today. Our youth have, are not being taught properly. And then some, well, uh, so a lot of people are teaching, I don't know where this comes from, but, well, we'll just teach our children at home. Well, that's fine, too. If you're qualified and you're able to teach them, well, that's, thank God, teach them. <laughs> But how many, how many of these home schools, the teachers, the parents, whoever's doing it, not even qualified to be a teacher? And the reason I'm saying that, I think, is because how many preachers are in pulpits today teaching everybody else, and they're not even qualified? If you put a preacher in the pulpit here and somebody say, well, you're one of them. Well, that's your opinion. If it's God's opinion and, and if I was hurt in church, God would take me out of here. So a lot of people can get smart or get, you know, upset. But basically, you know what I'm saying. You put a preacher in the pulpit that's not qualified to be a preacher, wasn't called by God to be a preacher, where is that going to leave the people in that church. If you put a teacher, a man teaching our young people that's not educated themselves, a man, not qualified to do that, where does that leave the kids? Nobody wants to talk about it. Nobody wants to bring it up. Fear keeps people from even talking about it. We've got to get away from that church. That's what's wrong with this world today. I would grant, or I would venture to say, there's thousands of people, amen, if they, if they spoke from their mouth what was in their heart, they would say, Biden has messed up. But they don't dare say that publicly. Because they're in the Democratic Party. Or they're a senator. Or a congressman. People today don't want to say what's truth anymore. They want to say what benefits them. What, what elevates them in their agenda. I will not curse again the ground anymore for man's sake, for the imagination of man's heart is evil from his youth. Neither will I again, amen, smite every living creature as I have done, while the earth remaineth, seed time, harvest, cold, heat, summer, winter, and day and night shall not cease. And he, he didn't. But listen to this. In Genesis 12 and 7, And the Lord appeared unto Adam and said, Unto thy seed will I give this land, and there he builded an altar unto the Lord. I'm just reading a couple to get us really into this Bible lesson this morning. Who appeared unto him. 1 Kings chapter 18. Turn there with me. We're going to be there a while. 1 Kings chapter 18. Verse 21 right on down. If the Lord lets me through 40. Everybody knows about Elijah. That's why I say people's listening to everybody else, and I'm talking about you as saints. There's nothing wrong with you getting the Bible out and reading it and studying it, but people don't want to do that. They'd rather get on the computer, and I'm not going to get into and listen to some guy that doesn't even know who Jesus Christ is and get all their information. It's wrong, it's wrong, it's wrong. It's, it's detrimental, it's, it's hurting, it's harmful, it's leading people away from God instead of to God, but we can't get nobody to believe it. Well, it's the truth. 
Some people, as soon as you open up your mouth and start preaching from the scripture, you know what they do? <clears throat> I tell you what they do. They do. You can do that. <laughs> but up ahead, there's the judgment seat of Christ. The great judgment day that's coming. Nobody's going to get away from it. Amen. After, unless you're one of them that was taken in that first resurrection and was dead in Christ. Those will be gone. Verse 21. Elijah came unto all the people and said, How long halt you between two opinions? If the Lord be God, most of you I would think knows the story behind this. God's people were being deceived. They were being lied to. They were, be, they were following a, a false god, a man referred to as Baal. Didn't even exist except in their minds. Like a lot of doctrines today and, and, and ways, they don't even exist. They're just in people's minds. There's no proof of it. If the Lord be God, follow him. If Baal, then follow him. And the people answered him not a word. You know why the people didn't answer Elijah a word? Because they feared him. If we get to all the scriptures today, when Elijah come around, he was kind of like Samuel. You better bite your tongue. You better act right. Because that's a man... That can put you on the, on the right track, and, or he can take you out of here. <laughs> so they didn't say nothing. Fear's on them now. Where's that fear today? There's no fear in, in a lot of churches. And even if there is some fear in the church, like I said today, with here, I'm sure there's a lot of people in here that fear God. But my question is, how many people is in here that don't fear God like they used to or, or like they should? Well, they're here. But where is the fear of God? Where is that? My God, my God. When that song is sung, <laughs> tears start rolling. People heading to the altar. Where is that? Well, we've elevated above that. That's your problem. We've got to get back down where we still need God. We still trust Him. We still get down here. I don't care if you had the Holy Ghost for 40 years. You still need to pray and get a hold of God. Amen. i tell you something else I touched on a few years ago and hadn't in a while. And I'll just say it again this morning. It bothers me as a minister, as a pastor. It, it bothers me that our musicians don't pray more here at church. They're all and singers. Where does it exclude the singers from going to the altar? Or the piano player or any other instrument? <laughs> or preachers? My Lord, if Baal, well, follow Baal. And the people answered him not a word. Then said Elijah unto the people, I, even I, only remain a prophet of the Lord. That's a bold statement for Elijah, but it was the truth. A pastor today, a preacher, ministers today can make some bold statements today, and even though it's true, well, did you hear what he had to say? He's trying to build himself. No, Elijah wasn't trying to build himself. Elijah was just trying to get them to understand these 450 false prophets of Baal, and I'm here alone, is what he was saying. Preachers, all of us, myself included, I'm including myself. I want everybody out there 
to know that. We preachers need to get plainer, bolder, stricter. We've lost something, as the song said, somehow. And now we're paying. Then said Elijah unto the people, I, even I, remain a prophet of the Lord, but Baal's prophets are 450 men. Is that not true today? There was 450 prophets of Baal, this false god. How many, church, how many false prophets in 2024 <laughs> out there today under Maybe not this bell, but a bell. It's a whole lot more than 450. How many Jesus Christ preachers standing on the church, the name, the standard, how many of them are out there today? I think we've got the same problem Elijah had way back here. But everybody just sitting around in church, happy, content. Well, I went to church. I went to church. I'm in church. When was the last time you prayed? When was the last time you felt? When was the last time tears come out of your eyes? It was all I could do. And even then, I, I, I could feel tears coming into my eyes just listening to that song. I can listen to songs at home, sit there on the couch or, or wherever, and man, you can just feel it coming on you. Not, not the music, not the talent, the words. People are immune today of good gospel music. They're immune to it. They want something with a better beat. They want something, amen, to make them look good, sound good, get requested to sing more. They're not looking for... What's in the song? A lot of people might get upset with me, but it's the truth. At least I can openly admit I can't sing. <laughs> Some people can't admit, ah, he's hitting me this morning. That's me. No, they don't want to do that. They're sitting there saying, well, I hope Clarence is listening to him. Twenty-three. Let them therefore give us two bullocks, and let them choose one bullock for themselves, and cut it in pieces, and lay it on the wood. I don't have time to bring all this out. Lay it on the wood. Lay it on the wood. I read that this time, and it hit me different than it's ever hit me before. Lay it on the wood. The wood. Well, there's several other scriptures. I don't think I have the notes on that. I kind of printed them out. There's a few other scriptures that talks about laying that sacrifice on the wood. I'm getting ahead of myself, I know. But our sacrifice, Jesus Christ, where'd they hang him? On wood. The cross. The tree. People today don't want to put their sacrifice where it should be. They're put in every place it shouldn't be. That's long. Lord, help me. I knew, I knew all week, for a couple of weeks, thinking on this, I knew this, this was going to be different. Listen. Lay it on wood and put no fire under it. Put no fire under it. Again, another hour or two we could spend the Holy Ghost and fire. It's always the same, related. We're talking about what this is referring to is the fire of God that would come down and consume the sacrifices. The fire the fire of God is not coming down, church. 
in the places of worship across this world like it used to. The fire of God doesn't come down and can accept these sacrifices because they're not clean. They're not like they ought to be. Lay it on the wood, put no fire under it, and call on, now listen, call ye on the name of your gods. How many of them altars out there today, they wasn't erected unto the name of Jesus Christ. They've been erected unto some, some false god, some kind of a Baal, if you will. You gotta say, man. They had a God in their mind. They had an altar there. It just wasn't erected unto God at that time. Actually, we'll find out. I ain't got time to go into that. I studied on this. We'll, we'll get into that later. I want to finish this. He call, and say, and, and call ye on the name of your gods, and I'll call on the name of the Lord. Yeah, I'll call on the name of the Lord. What is the name of the Lord? Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. Hmm. Lord, your people just, uh, they're not thinking. They're not analyzing. They're just doing things that feels all right. Let me get back to this. Where was that? 24, yes. Call you on the name of your gods, and I'll call on the name of the Lord. And the God that answereth by fire, let him be God. The God that answereth by fire. He didn't say the gods that answers by fire. The God that answers by fire. Because there's only one true God. Baal can't send down fire out of heaven and consume nothing. But God can. <laughs> Let him be God. And all the people, amen, answered and said, it is well spoken. Well, they had to. It's the truth. Elijah said unto the prophets of Baal, choose you one bullock for yourselves and dress it Dress it first, for you are many. <laughs> I don't know how a lot of people took that, but to me that was a kind of a little gouge to them. I'm here by myself. There's 450 of you. You go first. I'm going to be here by myself, except for God. And call on the name of your gods, plural, but put no fire under it. And they took the bullock which was given them and they dressed it, called on the name of Baal from morning until, uh, uh, now listen to this, from morning even until noon, saying, Oh, Baal, hear us. Oh, Baal, hear us. Calling out on a God that doesn't even exist in reality, only in their minds. <laughs> And I'm foolish? No, these people's foolish. Amen. But there was no, but there was no answer. Listen now, old Bell hear us, but there was no no voice, no any that answered. How many prayers are getting answered today? It may not be because of this, but where's your mind? Where's your heart? What condition is the person that's calling upon God? Is it clean? I talked to you not too long ago, God does not hear sinners, except when they believe Him and call upon Him in repentance. The Bible even teaches that God does God doesn't just hear everything everybody asks. He doesn't give everybody everything they ask. You may not like it, but it's true. And 
and call on it. Now listen to this. And call on the name of Baal from morning until evening, or morning even until, uh, until noon, saying, O Baal, hear us. But there was no voice, nor any that answered. They leaped upon the altar which was made. I've tried in my mind a few times in the past, and I'm sure some of you have, to kind of picture in my mind what was going on that day with this altar. And they're calling upon God all the way up till noon first. No answer. No fire. Not even a spark. <laughs> so now they're getting nervous. They jump up on the altar. Think about that. This is, this is an altar that's been erected unto the Lord here in a few minutes. It's been repaired, not this one. Leaped upon the altar which was made, and it came to pass at noon that Elijah mocked them. Mocked them. I've seen where people get upset and talk about uh, one of God's ministers that gets up and defends truth, calls it out, maybe even laugh at it a little bit. Well, he's not of God. If he was of God, he wouldn't be doing that. Was Elijah of God? He mocked him. Where is your God? Where's Baal? <laughs> maybe he's resting. Maybe he's gone somewhere. I like to ask some people, if you're so godly, where is your God? Oh. They leaped upon the altar which was made, and it came to pass at noon that Elijah mocked him and said, Cry aloud, for he is a God. You say he's a God. Get a little louder. I'm going to tell you something, friend. Getting a little louder doesn't always get a hold of God. Especially if you're calling on a God that doesn't exist. For he is a God. Neither Now listen, either he is talking, or he's pursuing, or he's on a journey, or a preadventure he sleepeth and must be awakened. He's mocking them. He's making fun of them. So don't condemn me when I get in the pulpit and defend the gospel of Jesus Christ. Like the early church did and like Paul did. Paul said he was set for the defense of the gospel. Get mad at me if you want, but I don't know who your God is. And I'm not going to quit defending the gospel because somebody gets mad at me. Well, we'll just leave church. Well, that's your prerogative. Or you can do like some, we'll just, we'll just leave and we'll take all these ties with us and we'll shut you down. Well, we're not shut down yet. In fact, we're better off today than we've ever been. And that's no reflection on Bishop Lee or any pastor before or any of the church. I'm just simply saying God is blessing us, has blessed us, and will continue to bless us. And nobody is going to stop it except God. We're better off than we've ever been. We're better off in every way than we've ever been. We don't need no Baal worshipers to make things work here in the church. All we need is a few God-fearing people. Cry aloud, for he is a God. Verse 28, And they cried aloud and cut themselves after their manner with knives and latchets till the blood gushed out upon them. See, I don't know if people take time like they do songs to listen to what's being said and the feeling. These people wasn't, see, that's what a lot of people today to do. They jumped upon this altar. They're crying and shouting. That ain't working. 
the other didn't work. So, well, all right, let's start cutting ourselves. <laughs> Till the blood gushed out. See, blood on the altar. We won't get into that either. Foolish. I hate to use this word, but the kids are downstairs. Stupid people. Dumb. Ignorant. Up there cutting themselves. Wait a minute. These are religious people. Yeah, they're religious. They got a religion. They got a faith. They got a belief. They've got a false God. But they're stupid. Forgive me. <laughs> they don't have any understanding about the God. My, my, my. They cried aloud, cut themselves after their manner with knives and latches till the blood gushed out upon them. It came to pass, amen, when, when midday was past, and they prophesied until the, now listen, until the time <clears throat> of the offering of the evening, evening sacrifice. They prophesied. Now here's these ignorant people. Don't even know what truth is. Don't even know who God is. They got an imaginary God in their mind named him Baal. He's not listening to a thing that they say. He's not hearing them. He's not answering them. There's no fire, nothing. They start cutting themselves, still nothing. Now all of this is going on on the altar. Not out here, now beside it, on it. You'd be surprised what goes on in people's minds. What do they do? They start prophesying. Well, we all, all should understand and know now that there is true prophecy and there's false prophecy. There's true prophets and there are false prophets. So these, when they started prophesying, this was false prophets. Because Baal doesn't exist. <laughs> Amen? They can't be prophesying by him because he doesn't exist they're not prophesying from God it's a lie they're putting on a show and they're prophesying and prophesying and prophesying I've been places of worship where people start prophesying and as soon as they start I can feel it I don't get up uh, <clears throat> one of these days I'm liable to I really do I can tell that ain't of God that, that is not of God. You can sit there and prophesy all you want. You can run around the church. You can have, you know, your tears running out. I can tell you right now, by the Holy Ghost, that wasn't God. But people today are afraid to do anything like that. Wasn't too long ago, somebody in the conference said, not here, talking about this now. I, you know what I said? That wasn't the prophet of God, something to that effect. That can't be. Nobody wants to say things like that. They're afraid. You know why you're afraid? You know why there's fear in people like that? Because they're not real sure of themselves. That's right. They're not 100% sold on themselves. Well, I want you to know, and all this listening to me today, I am 100% sold on the name of Jesus Christ, the church of Jesus Christ, the baptism in his name, the Holy Ghost, the speaking in other tongues, the dress. I am sold on that. Amen. That song, my Lord, that song stirred me. And I hope and pray it stirred you a little. You might as well look it up. Now there's other versions of it, other people singing it, but that's the best one I've found so far. Amen. Came to pass, amen, when midday when midday was past, they were they prophesied until the time of the evening. Now listen. Right after noon, and they're prophesying, 
screaming and hollering, running around on top of this altar, tearing it up, literally, and prophesying from then till the evening. We can't even get people to sit in church that long these days. I'm sorry, but just come out. Ah, Lord have mercy. They have prayed, they have preached. Well, at least we're preaching the truth. We're preaching out of King James Version of the Bible. We're telling people what, what God is saying. They can't take that today for four hours. But these false prophets... Baal's people can sit there and prophesy and run around on top of an altar and tear it absolutely to pieces from noon to the evening sacrifice? We ought to be ashamed of ourselves. We're weak sometimes. Some things. We're weak. You may not want to admit it, but we are. I said we too. I didn't say you. I said we, all of us. I remember sitting at a funeral, I think I've told you, in Jamaica one time years ago. I'm sitting upon that altar, a little church, didn't even have glass in the windows, open. Wasn't this big, no air conditioning. I, don't, I didn't even have a fan. I sat up there from 10 o'clock, I think, 9.30, 10 o'clock in the morning till 3 or 4 that afternoon on that pulpit. That place, place was packed. This man was well known. This bishop was a good man. Preached the truth. A lot of people, even people that wasn't even in church, they were standing there all day long saying goodbye to this man. Where's that at today? Get him preach at a funeral. They had, I don't know how many preachers preaching that day. Two or three preachers, but they had choirs. And they had this, and they had that. They do things differently. I'm not criticizing. But I sat there all that time. I'm thinking, my Lord, it's hot. <laughs> but I didn't come. I didn't get upset. It's just the way things go. We can't even have a two hour service today. Somebody's gonna be upset. to our message. Yes, we have become weak, spoiled. Well, I just don't think that's necessary. Well, nobody asked you. Is that rude? Nobody asked you what you thought. Keep it to yourself. Why spread it around and get somebody else depressed? You feel upset? You feel that's not needed? Keep it to yourself. All that day, nor to an, nor nor any to answer, nor any that regarded all that hollering and screaming, jumping up and down on that altar, tearing it, then get to cutting themselves. Blood's gushing out. That ain't working. Then they turn to prophesying, so they're prophesying from there and all the way to the evening, and not a peep from Baal. Verse 30, And Elijah said unto all the people, Come near unto me, the man of God. How many knows Elijah was a true man of God? If it come out of his mouth, I put it like this, if it come out of his mouth, it was true. Like Samuel. Don't mess with Samuel. Don't cross him. Go up to the New Testament. Paul and them. Don't mess with them. There's no, there's no fear today. Talk about the pastor. Speak against him. Call somebody out, run him down. No fear. You might want to really think before you start doing it. And I'm not just talking about me. I'm talking about any man of God, any preacher.
keep your comments to yourself. Listen to this. Elijah said unto the people, Come near unto me. And all the people came near unto him. And he repaired the altar of the Lord. That threw me. Last few days, we, whatever I've been looking and going over this, I'm thinking, wait a minute, wait a minute now. It's saying, and he repaired the altar of the Lord that was broken down. He called that altar of the Lord. I think if you go to some other scriptures, I wrote some down, Exodus 3 and 1, listen to this. And Moses, how many remember Moses on the back side of the mountain watching over the flock? Remember that? Now Moses kept the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian. And he led the flock to the back side of the desert and came to the mountain of God, even to Horeb. That's where he's at today. I'm sorry, that's where we're at today in this Bible lesson. Upon that mountain, upon Mount Carmel. Think about that. Well, I have still, I said, man, this is, i got to look into this. Well, you go in there and you look, scripture, you'll find, sure, man, <laughs> that place is the same as that. We just never put them together and all this. And then if you go into history, amen, sometimes we all know this from scripture, that they like to build altars upon mountains. They felt, reading that guy started there, closer to God. Which is fine, I got no problem with that. But listen, church, here they are on an altar, and, and Elijah said, he repaired the altar of the Lord that was broken down. That altar that they were standing on, they did all this unbelievable things. But here comes a man of God to that altar and he repairs it. He fixes it. It's now done right in the name of the Lord. See what a difference it makes? This is a great altar. It's erected unto Jesus Christ. In fact, some of our names, as I said every now and then, when it was being built, we wanted to put our name that we, that we believe that this altar was erected unto Jesus Christ. Well, Lindell Westmoreland came up with that idea. And I think he was the first one to sign it. This altar has been erected unto Jesus Christ. It's holy. It's dedicated. That's why we don't want children on it, playing on it. Don't even, shouldn't even be playing around it. We don't set coffee cups on it. We don't sit on it. It's erected unto Jesus Christ. This has been erected so people can kneel down where his name is. Get a hold of God. And you don't have to scream and holler, jump up and down, tear up the altar. Reference this. But again, before I move on, when was the last time you were in it? I like coming over here sometimes. I'm not saying every service, every day. I come in and I, I love this place. And I'll go down every now and then, just go down and kneel. Nobody here, I'm not doing it for show. I want to talk to the Lord a minute. Church, I'm telling you, we need, I don't like this word, the way it's used in the world, but we need to get back some more, we need to get more spiritual. Instead of on Thursday night and Sunday, we're real spiritual. You ought to be spiritual on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Um, uh, 
They used to be, as the song said, tears on the floor of the church, on the altar. I've seen it, and I've done it. I've seen others take a napkin and wipe the tears off. Somebody was praying. That's a good thing. How many, how many, all, how many tears have been falling on this carpet? All right, brother. All right, you made your point. Calm down now. <laughs> Let the Holy Ghost just simmer you down. I'm speaking the truth. Let's go to verse 31. Elijah took 12 stones according to the number of the 12 tribes of the son of Jacob unto whom the word of the Lord came saying, Israel shall be thy name. And with the stones he built an altar in the name of the Lord. <laughs> well, if these great men back then, when they built an altar, built it unto the Lord and in the Lord's name, why shouldn't we today? And why isn't his name out there for everybody to see? It's here. We preach it. What's wrong with putting it out there and broadcasting it? Oh, I don't want to hear that. There's probably a lot of preachers who get in a conversation with this would probably tell you, well... I don't think it matters what name you put on that building. It's just a building. Well, go back and tell Elijah and all them that erected these altars. Tell them that. It does make a difference. I, I'm going to close here in just a little bit. And then the Bible says, and he made a trench about the altar as great as would contain two measures of wheat and he put the wood in order in order, and cut the bullock in pieces and laid it on the wood. Or that again. And said four, I'm sorry, and said fill four barrels with water. Pour it on the burnt offerings and on the wood. Four barrels We're just trying to get people to have a few tears maybe land on it. I think of things like that. Four barrels of water. See, Elijah, the man of God, the true God, knew that in just a few minutes he's going to call on God and fire is going to come down out of heaven and consume this sacrifice. So he was making a point. He's going to prove to them nobody but God could do this. So when the fire came down, I'm getting a little ahead of myself, it didn't just consume the sacrifice, it consumed the altar, the wood. I believe the scripture says even the dust and the 12 barrels of water. Nobody but God can do that. God needs, when the Holy Ghost and fire, we can't get into that this morning, comes down today. There needs to be a sacrifice there, us, that the fire of God can consume it and accept it, if you will, receive it. But it's not always happening like this today. And he said, do it the second time. 
And he said, do it the third time. They did it the third time, and the water ran around about the altar, and he filled the trench also with water. <laughs> Came to pass, at, at, now listen, at the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice that Elijah the prophet came near and said, Lord God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, Lord God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, he knew who he was talking to. Hmm. Let, it be, let it be known this day that thou art God in Israel. He's going to prove them. I wanted to I have to get through this before we bring them children back up. He's going to prove to them who God really is. All them 450 prophets of Baal couldn't do nothing. Zilt. Zero. <laughs> he calls on God one time. One time. Why? Well, because now there's an altar here that's been repaired. And my thought today is we need to repair the altars in our churches. Amen. Repair them. In other words, let's use them. It's erected. We've already got it. It's been erected unto his name. Let me go on here. Let it be known this day that thou art God in Israel and that I am thy servant. He's wanting to prove to them who the real God is and he's trying to prove to them that he is of God and that I have done all these things at thy word. That tells me and you and all them that God was leading him in this. There was no God leading the prophets of Baal. <laughs> but there is a God leading. Amen. Elijah. There's a God leading us today. Don't want to believe it? That's your business. You'll regret it one day. But that's all we can do is tell you. That this people may know that thou art the Lord and that thou hast turned their hearts back again. That's where I wanted to get. All of this was done, and he even said it, and it's by God. That all these people, he wants to get Israel back to God. What's wrong with us saying, church, let's get the church of Jesus Christ today, Israel, spiritually speaking, not in reality, but the church, this new dispensation. Let's get it back to where God planted it 2,000 years ago. Sacred, holy. You don't have to beg the saints to come. Just tell them when the services are. We'll be there. i never seen anything like it today. If I was to say, a church, tomorrow night, 6.30, let's all be here. We're going to feel led. Let's, let's have a service. I guarantee you there'll be some people, my Lord, Kate, what is going on? Why is he doing that? I got plans made tomorrow night. I had this plan. I, I, well, I just ain't going to be there. I know this I know this makes people upset. I'm just bringing out the truth. I believe that our plans can be pushed aside a lot of times in order to obey God's will. That this people may know that thou art the Lord God and that thou hast turned their heart back again we need to get back church to the way it used to be a lot more 
We need to get the music back. And I'm talking about the songs and the music. Yes, I said that. Her heart back. Then, then the fire of the Lord fell and consumed the burnt sacrifice and the wood and the stones and the dust and licked up the water that was in the trench. And when all the people saw it, they fell on their faces. They fell on their faces. What do they do today? Well, I want you to listen. I can't believe he's doing that. Anger rises up in them. Here are these people, my God. Yes, Lord. Then we wonder, why doesn't God move like he used to move? Why isn't God answering prayers like he used to? Why aren't people being, getting healed? Well, I figure by now you've got a few of the answers. we got to learn to get back to reverence God, reverence his house, his name, and his altar, and listen to the preacher. I'm talking about the Holy Ghost preacher. Verse 39. And when all the people saw it, they fell on their faces and said, listen what these people said. He is the God. The Lord. He is the God. Next time I, all of a sudden say, church, we're going to have three or four day or a week even, revival. Starting next week, some of you might already learn to say, I'm talking about God, now not me. He is the Lord. In other words, whatever God wants, God's will be done. Yes, Lord. If God has led on the preacher, amen, the pastor up there to have a revival, bless God, let's have a revival. He said, I can't believe he picked this. What is he doing? Church, you might, maybe you can't see that yet. This makes a difference in our life, in our work, in our walk with God. God sees and hears all of this. Amen. He is God, the Lord. He is the God. Last verse. Elijah said unto them, Take the prophets of Baal, let not one of them escape. And they took them, and Elijah brought them down to the brook of Kendra and slew them there. Now, we can't do that literally today, but I tell you what we can do. We can get enough preachers with enough amen in them to let the Lord lead them, and Scripture only. We can get in here, up here and tear down every false altar there is. And tell everybody they ain't but one God. And there's not but one gospel. Go ahead, brother, get them children. And Ben's today I'm confessing. I'll confess this also. I am totally surprised that them classes are not already up here. I've seen time when I go over two or three minutes. They didn't wait for nobody to come and get them and say it's a time. They just come on up. Now, I'm not upset. I'm just saying. I'm trying to make a point. Where is the fear of God these days? Where is the thought, well, maybe something's going on up there? And that would be acceptable. Man, maybe God's moving. We'll continue this next Sunday, kids. Let's go upstairs. That would be fine. But sitting there saying, oh, my Lord, is he ever going to hush? That's wrong. God's not pleased with that. And quiet. Sitting on there, what is he doing? Quit worrying about it. Yes, Lord. God, your will be done. Amen? 
I'm telling you, all I can do is advise you. Thinking like that, rather than like this, can change your life.